in the era of technological advancement every day some new ideas and prototypes are building which is taking over in our daily activities in industries offering a large variety of products bring challenges in areas such as design process configuration preparation inventory management and transportation management among these challenges inventory management is one of the most crucial issues that are emphasized by various prior studies the environment nowadays is widely acknowledged to be characterized by diverse customer needs and preferences as well as fierce competition efficient inventory management can undoubtedly yield a profitable business while a failure in the inventory management not only will reduce the final profits of the involved players but also lead to some negative effects on the environment and affect social welfare by tradition asset tracking and inventory management in retail supply chains depend on old school methods like manual systems where a person sits down in front of every entry exit point and writes down details of each item in of an inventory on a piece of paper or where accounting tools and systems are used for individual details of each item in an inventory example microsoft excel these old school methods are the reason behind many prevailing problems like inconsistency in data entered human errors lack of central customer database and slowing down and slowing down of overall operation components are always moving department to department and are used and are used by various departments as such the warehouse managers the service engineers and the sales force of the company must know the status of these components the service engineers must learn when a new component arrives or moves out of the warehouse moreover the engineers must be able to track a component from the day it was manufactured in our rfid based smart invest inventory management system we counter these drawbacks and put forward a more efficient solution this system will be more feasible for everyone and can be easily accessed remotely as well as on site with all the data in one place it will be it help for faster and optimized operations so i'll be talking about the hardware block diagram for the hardware part rfid arduino and the com port is the major part as the rfid reader uh, scans the rfid tag uh, it gets a stack of data for that uh, tag Uh, <clears throat> for that instance, the LED and the buzzer uh, goes high for indication that scan has successfully done. As the stack of data is mentioned in the Arduino, and uh, sends to the software by the serial communication. The important component in the circuit diagram is the RFID uh, reader and the Arduino board. RFID uh, reader has uh, eight pins, out of which we are using only seven pins. The number one is the three point three volt supply. Uh, next is the uh, rest uh, line connected to digital pin five of the Arduino. Uh, next is ground. Uh, then <coughs> Uh, MISO master in slave out, which is connected to the connected to the digital twelve of the Arduino pin, and next is master out slave in, which is connected to the digital pin thirteen of the Arduino. Next is the <coughs> uh, the last one uh, is the data line, which is connected to the digital pin ten of the uh, Arduino, and the LEDs and uh, LEDs and the buzzers are connected for the uh, <coughs> uh, uh, notification purpose. Uh, LED is connected to the pin three of the digital uh, uh, pin, and buzzer is connected to the pin number two. So here is the Arduino code. Uh, the first uh, uh, is uh, <coughs> for the header files. Here the SPI header is for uh, serial peripheral interface uh, for the communication purpose. And next is MF RC522 uh, header file for RFID reader. Here we will define the pins uh, for the RFID uh, for the Arduino. Uh, <coughs> so the first uh, pin is data line, uh, which is connected to digital 10, which is uh, used for the <coughs> data line uh, for the Arduino. Next. Uh, for our rest pin, which is connected to a digital pin five of the Arduino, for the uh, uh, reset. Uh, next is the MFRC five double two. It is used to create the uh, interface uh, as the reset pin and the data line pin is uh, sent sent as a parameter. And also the buzzer pin is connected to uh, digital pin two and LED pin is connected to digital pin three. So next part is the setup. Here the serial begin nine six double zero is used to initiate the serial communication. Similarly, SPI begins, which is used to initiate the SPI bus. The the uh, MFRC fifty two is used to initiate the RFID uh, scanner, uh, which is reader. And next is the pin mode, uh, where the buzzer pin is uh, uh, set as the output, uh, and LED is also set was uh, set as the output. Uh, when the <coughs> reader uh, detects the RFID tag, the buzzer and the LED pins goes high. In that case, next is the uh, wide loop. In this uh, first, the check for the RFID tag. If tag is not present, it will continuously check for the tag. Uh, as tag is detected, detected buzzer and the LED uh, pin is on high state. After after the delay of the hundred seconds, hundred uh, hundred millisecond buzzer and LED goes down. Here the main uh, uh, is to check whether the RFID uh, tag is uh, detected or not. The next is for uh, data, uh, as the, it is used for checking for the data whether the data is coming to the software or not. Uh, in that case, if the data is coming, then the uh, program goes for the next line of instruction. 
here uh, the variable uh, the string variable name is contained used to get the uh, rf uh, data uh, what uh, in the, uh, when the tag is uh, get, uh, the tag sends the stack of data out of which we are uh, in, in interested only the uh, uid of the tag for that compare the we compare the whole data uh, because the, the data comes into the stack of uh, bulk, uh, bulk where we are required only the uid card of the data so here the data is compared and stored into the uh, variable name content and the and the data is concatenated in the string and stored in, into the content where the content is uh, to is to uppercase for the uh, for all the required data and also it prints for the uh, monitoring purpose now I will be explaining you the software part of our project. So this is the software block diagram. The data from the Arduino, the RFID tag number, will be sent to the InventTrack software, which is a, our smart inventory management and asset tracking software, which we have made using PyQt library, which is a GUI toolkit for building interactive GUI desktop applications. So in this software, basically a user can add new item, withdraw item, and update item. These are the functions which we have provided. And all this data will be sent to Google Sheets using Gspread library and we can also retrieve the data back from the Google Sheet. So all these things are going on online. We have also made a website and the data from the Google Sheet is displayed to the website using sheetdb.io and we have also made a notification system wherein notifications will be sent to the store manager like when an, a new item is added, withdrawn or updated and whenever the uh, inventory stock is uh, less then also a notification will be sent to the store manager and if a inventory item is about to expire then also a alert message will be sent to the store manager using this all things are done using simple mail transfer protocol SMTP. now let's move on to the code of our project so this is our code at the beginning of the code i imported all the important libraries which are required like PyCDL, PyQt, Gspread and SMTP library sending email part so basically we need to give the sender's email receiver's email and what message we want to type in that email all those things are defined over here and we have to connect to the SMTP email server and we have to basically log in to that server okay and the next step we are doing over here is we are finding the next available row in the google spreadsheet okay in this step over here we are connecting to the google sheet so we have to pass the service account credentials dot json file over here and our python code will connect to our google sheet now in the next thing we are doing is welcome screen okay so in this basically there are two things front end and back end so for designing front end there is something called as qt designer in iqt library so qt in qt designer you can basically create a front end uh, front end part of your application it is very easy because you have to just drag and drop the labels all the widgets you can drag and drop and you can uh, make a gui application front end part very easily in qt designer and this saves a lot of time and you can focus on back end part so in this way i have designed a welcome screen page over here and similarly i have added two buttons login button and create a new account button so in this i have loaded in back end part i have to code that i am loading this ui file this ui file i have to load in my python code and then i have to define that what will happen if the user creates login function or a create function if user create login function then it should go to the login page and if it creates create new new account function then it should go to the create new account page so these are the things which we have to design in the back end part okay so now if a user clicks, create clicks on login function then he will go to the login page which i have made over here okay and the next part is on login screen the main function is a login function in login function it will see that whatever the username and password has been inputted it will check that if that username and password is correct or not if it is correct then it will be logged in so once you log in you will uh, you will go to the main screen main, the main window function okay so the main window function is like this which i have made so there is nothing but there is a combo box over here there are different labels for displaying the data there is a queue table widget and there are three buttons add new item withdraw item and update item buttons which will be used for adding withdrawing and updating the items and this is how the main window is developed and now in main, main screen class there is you can see i have defined the backend part that the queue table widgets are uh, width and height all i have defined over here and then what the function should be done when add or withdraw or update item button is clicked in this the important thing is that loading the data in the queue table widget using this function and these are all the three screens which i have defined over here add new item withdraw new item update new item now in add new item screen the important function is scan function in this scan function we are scanning for the data we are connecting we are making object arduino serial data we have to pass two parameters the com port to which the arduino is connected and the baud rate at which the data is going to be uh, received okay and once the object is created we are going to see if the data is coming or not on the serial port if it is coming then we will uh, store that data in a variable and after storing we will check if that already exists in the uh, sheet or not if it exists then we will print that it already exists or else we will input that data okay and in this uh, there is also a function called enter data this enter data function basically enters all the data which is entered in the add new item screen to the google sheet so all the data is added to the google sheet over here and an email is sent to the uh, store manager okay now the next uh, thing is withdraw item screen in withdraw item screen if uh, if you see this is the withdraw item screen now in this there is scan button so first you have to scan and after scanning the product id and all the details will be displayed okay and you have to specify the quantity which you want to withdraw and you have to withdraw okay 
now there is a main function over here is the withdraw function okay in withdraw function we need to check if the uh, the uh, box and quantity which is entered if that stock is available in our inventory or not if it is available we will print stock is available or else we will print no stock okay if it is available we will print stock is available and we will deduct that amount from the inventory and we will update that count on the google sheet okay and our email will be sent to the user that this uh, item uh, is withdrawn okay so this was about withdraw item now the next is update item screen in update item screen also uh, it is nothing but it is similar to the add new item screen and withdraw new item screen firstly all the data will be displayed okay so all the data will be displayed first at the top and then will be will be please update all the details of the item so you have to update all the details of the item and click on the update button so in this way we have created the update item screen okay and this is the main function which actually actually begins at the start and executes our application we have created an app object over here and we have also created a login uh, login object and we have passed welcome screen class which is we have defined over at the top and we are using something called as queue stack widget so in this basically uh new windows or new dialogues are stacked upon each other as we create them okay and i also set the height and width and the window title as inventory and then app dot execute executes the function so this was all about the code now we will see the demonstration of the project to demonstrate a project once you start the software you come to the welcome page for new users you are supposed to create a new account and for existing users you can click on login enter your username your password and login after logging in you will come to the main home page here the product id along with the product name the number of boxes available and the quantity of equipment in each box is mentioned the manufacturing date and the expiry date are supposed to be entered according to the dates mentioned on the box a grn number and the status indicating whether the item is currently available or not in our inventory add a new item because this is the box check for the product id the product name the number of boxes the quantity of items the manufacturing date and the grn number then we click on add new item and scan a new rfid tag as the product id is displayed on the screen we enter the details in this case the product received is relays the number of boxes are 20 and the quantity of item in each box is 30 we update the manufacturing date and the expiry date and we enter the grn number as it is mentioned on the box and we stick the rfid tag on that particular box and click on continue once the new item has been added the software the software will prompt the message stating new item added to check this you can see on the google excel uh, on the excel sheet that a new item has been added relays the number of boxes is 20 and the quantity of items is 30 along with this an email has also been sent to the general manager which says that a new item has been added in the inventory now if we try to add the same item again we will click on add new item scan the software will display a message stating id already exists this is uh, this is there to prevent any duplication of any items going back now checking the withdraw item function to withdraw a particular item you click on withdraw scan you scan the rfid of the box the product id will be displayed the product name the quantity and the box item which are currently present are displayed here as well you can enter the values that need to be withdrawn now from 10 from 20 boxes we will withdraw 10 boxes and 15 quantity and the withdrawal date and click on withdraw after the successful withdrawal a message will be prompted stating withdrawal completed and as previously shown we will even get a mail of the same and it will be updated in the excel sheet the quantity has of the boxes is gone down to 10 and the item is 15 now about the update item feature for update item at times uh, a new box comes or arrives and we need to update it in the same particular shelf so what we will do is we will scan the rfid tag after all the details are received we will enter the product name as it is and we will update the quantity in this case the 10 boxes has gone up to 25 boxes and the quantity from 15 has gone to 20 the other specifications like the manufacturing date and expiry date as well as the grn number says the same and we click on update After the update is completed, you will get a message saying item updated. At the same time, when you click on the refresh button here, you will see the product being added and the uh, items are now updated. 
Another feature here is a product name feature. When you click on a particular product, for our switches, and click on search, all the details of the switches that are currently present in our inventory will be displayed. The quantities, the box, everything. So in this software, we have displayed uh, three different features, the add new item, the withdraw item, and the update item. This will help the general manager as well as the service engineer to be in the loop of which items have been added as well as withdrawn. It makes the whole process of inventory management very feasible for everyone. This software can be accessed remotely as well as on-site. And it makes the whole operation easy. After adding or removing the item from the Excel sheet using the application, we can see the changes in sheet and also in the application itself. But if the sheet has to be accessed remotely without giving access to the sheet itself, then what? For this particular purpose, we can use a website. In this website, we can display the sheet to the authorized person. For creating a website, we have used XAMPP, which is, which is a PHP development environment. Through XAMPP, we can create a MySQL database for the storage of email and password. To access the MySQL database, you just have to turn on the MySQL database module. After you turn on the MySQL database module, you can see this interface in your local host. And here you will create a login database. And in that I have created a users table in which we are storing username and password. Now we will go back to the code and see what the code is doing. In config.php file, we are establishing an interconnection between the website and the MySQL server. After that, here is the code for the form in which we are actually feeding the information and this is the backend of the form where we are storing the information in the MySQL database. In the login page, again we are creating a form to get the information and in the backend we are checking the information with the uh, registration information in the database and if the password and username is correct, then we are being redirected to the welcome page. In the welcome page, you can observe that we have used this script to show the actual inventory data. For this, we have used Google Sheet db.io. In Sheet db.io, we can create a JSON API of, a, of our Google Sheet. And this JSON API is in the form of a script. And this script we have used in our code. So to give you a short demonstration of our website, I will just log out from here. I'm being redirected to the login page. Let's say I am a new user and I want to register. So let's say my name is Sandy. Let's say my password is Sandy123. Let's say I will confirm my password and then I will sign in. So I have been, hopefully the data will be stored in the database and you can see that the username and password that I have entered has been stored in the database. So now I will use the same username and password to log in to our website. And then I have been redirected to the inventory page where we are actually seeing the inventory and so in this way we have used the website to display the data of our inventory thank you